time for the fun video that I wanted to shoot. So, Ill Clan is coming out. There's no bones about it. There was the book release. There is the tease to release Ill Clan TRO and Ill Clan uh, first setting book. I think it's the Battle of Tomorrow or something like that. But in any case, if you're wondering about what we do with Ill Clan, well, the recognition guides offer something really honest up front. They have the new mechs designed by Shimmering Sword and released to the Kickstarter and the new box sets. And you can use these to launch your Ill Clan collection. And then you can use them in whatever other setting you want to because it's just the old stuff being remade for new. This is Battletech after all, and they have technology that wanders down the ages. So you have this. But honestly speaking, one of the best places to start any kind of uh, collections with your own collection. What's your collection like? And as I have explained in other videos, my collection has some mechs that I bought primarily because I was playing Alpha Strike and I wanted some cool, hotter tech. And lo and behold, these mechs really, they're, uh, they're kind of on the, uh, yeah, they're Dark Age mechs, but like almost all <laughs> higher end Dark Age mechs, the question is, do they belong there? And so we have here these, uh, these clan mechs really need a different age to be played in, and Ill Clan is just right for that. But I kept looking through my collection, and I had the metal version of the Mad Cat 3. What a cute little abomination there. Well, there we go. I also had this. This is actually a conversion of mine. It's a clan artillery vehicle, a nice cheap way to get artillery on the table without burning points on mechs that carry artillery. And then, of course, I looked at my collection, and I had this wonderful yet terrible thing. Mad Cat 2, Mark IV. Not as powerful as I thought it was, but it, mathematically, and if you play Battletech, unless you have house rules, this thing, rules as written, actually has some really sneaky things it can do. So I'm adding that to my collection. Relatively assault heavy, I'm glad I have the, uh, the heavy mech and the medium mech here. So I went and looked into it and said, you know, what can I add to flavor up this uh, match of mine so I don't have it broken? I have a Raptor 2 in my collection. Is this in a Jihad mech? Actually, it was used and modified a lot during the Dark Age, and they were used a lot by the Republic of the Sphere. So this thingy is very legitimate to have kicking around an early Ill Clan setting. And it weighs in at 40 tons, it's another medium mech, but still, it can get the job done, do some nice recon and force. And lo and behold, I had a few blessings come my way. The most recent release from Ironwind Metals for Ill Clan is the mech I've been waiting for. It's the Warcrow Prime. I'll probably be using the Prime in the, I think it's the C configuration, but I love this thing. It just looks good. I'll be honest with you, I pick a lot of my mechs based on aesthetics. So this guy's released, he'll be joining my collection, although he came in the mail just today. You know, if it just came today, I can't have it assembled already. And I need a bit more to balance out my collection. Heavy, heavy, medium, medium, all this assault. Well, we stole a light mech from the Capellans. The Capellans actually made a decent Omni mech in the form of the Goon mech primarily designed to fry infantry with that plasma rifle but honestly speaking it's a it's a good little mech and it fits my aesthetic plans for my uh, force and it's perfectly in time for extremely late dark age and all into the ill clan setting as a brand new mech plus it's actually small light and maneuverable so i have in my own collection the direction i want to take with uh... going into ill clan i'm going to probably base it if you notice these are based in a pretty standard clan wolf color scheme. That's so from back in the day. Honestly speaking, um, I'm probably going to leave behind clan wolf, given how ill clan the opening chapters turned out. I'm going to say sayonara clan wolf guys, and I'm going to head out on my own. Probably do a, a company that's based on maybe a mixed compatriot company where we have clan technology. Maybe we'll have guys that are based on the deep periphery or they're in that stretch of uh, space between Strana Mekti and the uh, Terra, that new Silk Road that will be forming, and we can you know, feed off of that with our, uh, our newfound company, be we uh, legitimate or be we pirates. And I was thinking um, it would be kind of fun to see where we could take this. I'm going to look into this. We see the miniatures here. I'm going to look into the uh, just information on these and start talking about what we can do as far as tactics, strategy, just a general idea of building up a force you can actually play as an ill clan specific force. So now that the clans have taken over the galaxy, how are you going to amass your forces? Well, you could use whatever comes in the 3145 uh, RTOs. They have a pretty good selection despite some abominations of engineering. 
The recognition guides are the go-to for Ilkland right now. They have sheets for a lot of eras, but the Dark Age labeled sheets are pretty much there for Ilkland usage. So what's available in the recognition guides that are out right now? What's in them? You'll notice I skip four and eight. Those pretty much had remake mechs inside of them or Mark IIs. They don't have brand new mechs, but here we have a selection of the new mechs that are available. And the one that stands out presently the first on the list in the first recognition guide, whose miniature is available now, is the Dominator from Clan Wolf. At 65 tons, it does what a heavy mech should, at the lightest weight possible. The Dominator has an ER PPC and an ER large laser and a targeting computer on its right side. On the left side, it has a fist because they're done playing Inner Sphere games the wrong way. And an SRM-6, but that's just because I guess they still enjoy ammunition explosions. But the Dominator is pretty much designed to be a mech superiority machine. There's nothing really to say about the Dominator except for it is maneuverable, it packs a punch, and it can fight you close in. In Recognition Guide 2, we have the Sojourner, which is for Wolf and Exile. It's got a Gauss rifle, a large laser, a plasma cannon. It's pretty much what you expect out of a frontline mech, you know, with a few special things here and there. The Higher Falcon is what you expect from Jade Falcon. It's pretty much just more of the same jump around, use talons, land on people kind of uh, warfare. What really excites me, though, in Recognition Guide number 5, we have the first offering from Fox, also used by Ghost Bear, is the very useful and very well thought out and well designed Hammerhead. The Hammerhead sports hardened armor, two battle fists, and an AES system. It's done playing with the Inner Sphere uh, compatriots in the wrong way. It has its ranged weaponry on board, but primarily it's fast moving, hard armored target that when it gets close to you, it does not fear for its own safety. The Hammerhead's a good mech. Go ahead and buy it. It's When it comes out, we need to get Hammerheads running in our lances. Also available is the Cricket, designed by Karita. It's a very good mech in that it has no weapons on its arms and it has two fists. It has ballistic reinforced armor in, in case you're worried about all those auto cannons giving you a hard time, especially the LBX variety. The weapons are all stored in the torso and you, they include things like light PPCs. So you have the ability to still shoot and wield close combat in the same turn. And of course, we've already covered the War Crow in a different video. The Inferno is heavy mech used by the Federated Sons and Karita. It's a pretty nice one. Although, I appreciate the Hermit Crab. The love given to the Crab family in Recognition Guide 10 is great. And honestly speaking, the Hermit Crab fills a really nice light role with multiple different variants that adds it together with the Crab and the King Crab to make a really good family of mechs. Also in Recognition Guide 10, go buy that Recognition Guide. It's a great one. You get the Crucible. Inner Sphere players, you have a job. You're going to go out and find a crucible. You're going to headshot the thing, and you're going to show those clanners how you actually use a 100 ton assault mech that packs four Gauss rifles. According to the lore, the clan wolf use it as a second line defensive mech that is designed to cover supply lines. Well, that's a lot of supply line guards you can ambush and take their nice, heavy, expensive mech from. Then we have the Firestorm, which does something that I appreciate. It has both a plasma rifle and a plasma cannon in the same mech. This is a good design. I mean, I'm not usually fond of Wolf in Exile too much, or Clan Wolf as of this point in time. It's got a fist, it's got weapons for ranged combat, and it can definitely play the heat game very nasty. It can roast 3d6 worth of damage onto enemy infantry with those two plasma weapons or it could drop that much heat onto an enemy mech. This is a good mech. It's a good idea to get this in your lances if you really plan on screwing over guys who don't know how to manage their heat. Then we have the Lightning, which is just a Capellan pair up with an older mech, which I believe was made just before the Dark Age. It has a cowl. It has the kind of weapons you'd expect for your average heavy mech and does average heavy mech things. To be fair, the Capellans actually have better offerings in the uh, 3145 in the form of the Goon Mech, and in the form of the Raven 2. The two of those in combination are a much better ill clan pairing for the Capellans than anything else that they're being offered, presently speaking. 
Now, we have also some other mechs coming out. The Rawhide, which is considered both mercenary and a Steiner mech. It has reflective armor for all those pesky laser users. And of course, it mounts its own PPC with an AES system, as well as a battle fist. The Storm Wolf is pretty much the same kind of thing, but for Clan Wolf, except for its primary weapon is a Rotary Auto Cannon 5. Color me surprised. The Amarok is another Clan Wolf heavy assault mech, except for this one's built along the same lines that the Hammerhead is. It's got fists, it's got hardened armor, it mounts a ERPPC with a capacitor and a Rotary Auto Cannon 5 in a mech that I do believe has a torso mounted cockpit. The mech literally does not like death from above attacks. Then we have the last of this list, the other six guys haven't come out yet, and one of the more thoughtful mechs is the House Merrick's Eris mech. The Eris mounts a stub nose PPC like a true gentleman would, has missile boobs, and yes, that's a head mounted small pulse laser. If you want to look your enemy infantry in the eye and then hit them with an anti-infantry weapon, that's the way to do it. Also, much like a lot of the smart designs from this era, it maintains a battle fist on one side and a shooting weapon on the other, so it can still punch effectively in melee combat. Now, we're still waiting on six more recognition guides. It's likely that in the future these will all be rolled into a TRO for Ill Clan. I've been looking around and the information I'm seeing shows they're not coming out that immediately. The source book for Ill Clan is coming out first, then we'll probably get a TRO. You can pick and choose the ones you like the most. With just the recognition guides and of course the uh, 3145 books, you can actually do quite a bit building a force in Ill Clan. There are some themes that have obviously shown up in these books. If you want to build a force based around these themes, you can. So you don't have to follow my rules, but I'm thinking using these, I can make a more accurate to presently produced weaponry than if I was to just grab whatever I wanted to laying around my collection. This makes it so that I'm playing with cutting edge equipment, frontline equipment, recent equipment in the Ill Clan era. Now think about it, we have multiple different organization types, the lances, the five point stars for the clans, and of course the level twos from Comstar and Word of Blake with six mechs. I don't really want to go in the direction of one-upping people for a seven. Bringing out threes might be cool, because then you might have the ability to mix together multiple threes for different uh, flexibility. We've already seen, of course, how often do you find an inner sphere lance made completely out of clan mechs? I mean, come on, it's already happened. You might as well keep doing that. I'm probably heading that direction. I'm not going to be running a lot of three fours. Four or five is good enough for me. Anyway, I'm thinking about building a company that has, you know, three lances. An assault lance, a heavy lance, or medium lance, and then a medium lance or light lance. I want to call it a light lance, but it's going to have two mediums kicking around it, so I'll see what I can do. So here are my forces, ready and repainted for Ill Clan in a nice drab scheme that you know could fit just about anything. I have the line out of my three lances here, and how I can organize these don't really matter. I mean, in games of Battletech, I mean, I would bring like him and him and fight somebody or maybe bring the full lance like this and call it good. So it's not going to be like I'm going to be using the entire company all the time. But it's fun to organize things because how TOEs work in the real world is you have an organization of how your forces are, you know, set inside the company. I was thinking of having, of course, like I said, the uh, assault lance, which obviously carries these three members here. I like the idea, of course, having a fighting lance composed of my two strong heavies and then you know what I'm thinking about putting different heavies in here there's going to be a medium slash light lance he could be a really good support mech for this lance or maybe he'd be a really good support mech for the assault guys maybe he'd just be a good idea to put here however I really want to put I really kind of want to put my uh, hammerhead and the uh, the carrion crow in this spot here. That would be really good to have these two because they're more like straight up battle mechs where this thing pretty much just carries LRM-20s around. This guy could pretty much float for right now as far as organization. The gun mech though is a gun mech and so he's going where he's going. I still of course have three, these could be lights actually. If I'm putting my hammerhead and my carrion crow there and if the, the Mad Cat 3 it might just be a support mech for whoever needs it, I could get three different light mechs and just put them here. Of course, I also have the Raptor. 
The Raptor probably best fits with these guys here. So there's one medium dirtying up my light lamps. That's okay, you can do this stuff like that. And of course I have this random artillery vehicle. It's like this poor, I think it's called a Hadir or something. This guy just, he needs to be where he needs to be. Now, being artillery, I guess he could form up with the, the Mad Cat 3. However, where would he go? I don't have a dedicated artillery lance. Maybe I should buy two aerospace assets and say, eh, I have four lances in my company. Just call it good. And the aerospace assets provide a certain form of support, whereas these two mechs provide a certain form of support. Worst thing about the, uh, the Mad Cat 3 is it's pretty much a glorified downsized catapult with uh, weapon arms as opposed to weapons stuck in the torso. My organization is still waiting for everything. I, um, I want more mechs. I have a spot for four more mechs. And I hope we have more mechs come out in like the light medium, especially in the light side, that I like, that I can just appreciate and get into my forces for Ill Clan. That would be very, very sweet. This brings up a fun little question. Where did I get my various mechs from? Because yeah, I can say I want new mechs, but they don't just come from miniature source. You actually have to get them from a source book as well. Well, it's kind of uh, interesting. We've talked about this guy. He is from a recognition guide. The War Crow comes from a recognition guide, and so does so do both of these. Uh, from the 3145 Mercenaries book, we have the, uh, the Savage Wolf. And from the 3145 Capellan book, we get the Goon Mech. To be perfectly fair, all of these other mechs here are pretty much one that I found because I have a file for them for Solaris Skunk Works. And they fit the time period and the technological description earlier. Plus, if you go into Sarna, it says, he's Dark Age, he's Dark Age, he's Dark Age, he's Dark Age. Of course, it gives that one as Jihad, but, you know, it's half its description is how it was used by the Republic of the Sphere. And, of course, this guy's Dark Age, too. We have this plethora of uh, sources we could possibly pull from. I don't really feel like being too much of a purist with my force, but I do feel like definitely carrying that flavor of it's the best stuff from Ill Clan to start with. Of course, this is pretty much an early war um, uh, set up for Ill Clan. Ill Clan is going to have time periods pass, and we're going to have other things come to the fore. As far as Ill Clan is considered, are the tactics going to be different from normal Battletech? Since there's going to be a higher proliferation of you know deeper technologies, I'm willing to bet we'll see something develop. Now, I know that there's a lot of more unique armor types showing up now. Just a few mechs that have reflective armor. We have some that are uh, ballistic reinforced. Feral Lamellar, of course, is more widespread. Now more than it was than ever. This guy has stealth armor, by the way. So the armor doesn't just you know take up points of damages now. It has special abilities tied to it that you need a book for. And a lot of mechs have this arrangement now, like you do with the War Crow here, where it's got a fist and it's got a direct weapon of some kind. It's not just packing double cannons like a clan mech would, or have a... I don't have an example right here because I'm not in those kind of mechs, but you know, the, the two fists, and then there's like a weapon strapped to the arm of the... Uh, of the other mech. I'm not saying too much of that. So there's a thing where you have your purity where you can still punch after your shooting phase because your punching arm is separated from the rest of your arsenal loadout. There's still a few that deny that and have you know weapons strapped here and there, but there's a lot of guys who point in that direction where they, they leave an arm free for melee combat. So that may be a thing. There's also, I've seen a wider use of the uh, AES element. The AES is a pretty interesting technology. It allows for, if I understand, Plus one piloting skill of placing the legs, if placed in the arm locations, you have accuracy increases with weapons and or fists used in that location. I need to go look into those rules uh, in depth so I know them for sure, but that's generally what the AES does, which means we're going to be seeing a lot more precise hits landing in L Clan, as you'd expect with, you know, an increase of technology. Here we have just the forces as I have them right now. We're going to go ahead and assign him as support. Poor artillery vehicle. I have uh, four slots needs to be filled. I need to go out and buy some more medium mechs when they get released. I'm seeing that there is a bit more respect for the, the lighter side of mecha. A lot of times you'd see an 80 to 100 ton assault mech show up as some kind of guffaw where the designers were like, yeah, let's see how many weapons we can strap to this mech in this interesting configuration. But, you know, we actually have battle mechs that, you know, they do medial tasks, much like a weapon of war should. You often have medium weight weapons doing the actual workhorse tasks of the battlefield. I don't know how many games I'm going to get out of Ill Clan in the near future. For honestly speaking, I think I'm the only Ill Clan geared player I know of right now. So maybe I got to contact some people and see what can change. Hopefully you have fun while gearing up for Ill Clan 2 with whatever forces you prefer. 
And like I said, there's plenty of information in this uh, video and in the upcoming guides and source books to work from. Thanks for watching the video and have a terrific rest of your day.